you love toffee and you love cheesecake, this is the bake for you. We're making a traditional cheesecake with a gluten-free crust, of course. It'll have graham crackers and a little bit of nuts and then a, like a tart, beautiful, sweet cheesecake covered in toffee sauce. It's basically liquid toffee candy. Oh yeah, I made toffee and then I made sauce out of it. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel and my podcast. I'm excited to have you here. Um, and if you haven't heard my podcast before, I'm Carolyn and this is the gluten-free, no, <laughs> this is the Chili Bakes gluten-free podcast. My brain's fried a little too much toffee this morning. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is an amazing bake. I'm going to show you how to do a cheesecake. There's a few tips and tricks. Um, you know, I kind of screwed it up a little bit, but that happens in home bakes, but I show you how to make it look pretty and it's going to be amazing. Amazing. I'm super excited. Super, super excited to share this with you. Let's get to baking. Let's start with ingredients and equipment. Um, obviously gluten-free grams. I like this brand, Pamela's. It tastes good. Um, I had to order them. Sometimes they don't have them at the store. Um, so if you're gonna make the cheesecake, maybe you get the grams first. Also, I couldn't find toffee bar. You know, like a, I don't know what they're called. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the brand name, but I couldn't find a toffee bar at all. So I made the toffee, which I realize is way, way more labor intensive, but it also meant I made a, a toffee syrup. You can make this uh, cheesecake recipe much easier if you use, um, you can get a really good caramel sauce from Trader Joe's. There's a salted caramel sauce. It's super, super good. So if you don't want to make the toffee sauce, it's still really good and close to toffee. And then you can use a store-bought toffee bar. And then the whole recipe is a lot, lot simpler. It's, it's different. It's actually the way the recipe was written if you make it that way. But I decided to go a little overboard and make the toffee sauce myself and the toffee because I couldn't find it. So... There's that, just letting you know. So all the details will be in the recipe, in the show notes, so that you can figure out what you want to do. And if you want to go the whole nine yards and make the toffee and everything, great. And if not, I totally get it. Uh, the cheesecake itself is pretty straightforward. You will need um, a food processor for the crust, or you can use a rolling pin and a plastic bag to just roll out the crumbs into a what am I trying to say? Into fine crumbs, those graham crackers into fine crumbs and the nuts. You can just do them all together because the pecans are very soft anyway. Um, cheesecakes, it's really nice to have one of these. It's a spring form pan, the bottom comes out. So it's really nice. Uh, I would wrap the outside with foil because mine, the butter was leaking through. I don't know why it was leaking through this time. Uh, and it was making my oven smoke, which is always my favorite thing, trying to keep the smoke alarm from freaking out the dogs. Yay. Um, and if you're gonna make the toffee, and not buy a toffee bar, you might want a candy thermometer. I use the cold water method, and I will tell you how to do that in the notes too, but um, you're gonna go to 305, which is hard crack, and some people like a candy thermometer. So that's it for ingredients and um, equipment. We need a lot of cream cheese, like two pounds a lot. That is four blocks, because I'm not messing around with this cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. Let's get ready to bake, yay. Let's get started with the crust. We need a cup and a quarter of graham crackers, gluten-free of course. And we're just gonna kind of break them up so that they fit into the cup measure as best as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the smaller pieces you have, which I didn't do, means they're gonna fit better in here and you're gonna have a more accurate representation. Okay, sure. And I'm gonna put this right into the Cuisinart. Not exact, but close enough. So I'm gonna pulse these and bring them right back. Just a quick uh, round in the food processor. I made pretty uh, pretty good work of those graham cracker crumbs. There's a little bit of uh, bigger pieces, but I'm gonna make sure, uh, I'm gonna see if they come out with when I blend in the other ingredients. So that was should be a cup and a quarter-ish. I didn't pack them in perfectly, of uh, the gluten-free graham crackers. And then we're adding a, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, quarter cup of pecans. If you can't have nuts or you don't like pecans, you could use almonds, uh, almond flour, you could use walnuts, or just the same amount. So you could use an extra quarter cup of crackers if you don't want to add nuts or you can't have them. And then six tablespoons of melted butter. And I'm gonna take this off camera and pulse this again because it's not fun to listen to. Okay, it's been about a minute, I don't know, maybe two minutes, a minute and a half, um, and you should have moist crumbs. It should look, if it's too greasy, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to say here? 
gluten-free flour, depending on what people use to make their graham crackers, will hold not as much oil as a regular wheat flour. So if your crumbs are really wet or oily, you can add some more graham cracker bits until it gets, you want it to be like a damp, almost like damp sand. Not super wet, not super dry, uh, damp and moldable enough that when you press it into the sides of the springform pan, it will stay up there. So, so that's what we've got right here and we're just gonna put it in our pan. And this, uh, the crumbs will kind of stick to everything. So you could either, the crumbs will stick to your hands often or to whatever instrument you want to press this into. I usually use my hands to press it down into an even layer and then up the sides. Uh, if it's sticking a lot, you could use a piece of wax paper or plastic wrap and just press it like this and then it won't stick at all. So I may do that at the end. So right at the edge here where it goes from horizontal to vertical, sometimes you get a really thick edge, but if you press into it a little bit, you can get more to put up on the sides. And it doesn't have to be perfect because when you cut it, it crumbles anyway. And you know, we're not looking for perfection. We want to, we want the bottom part of the cheesecake at least to be inside the crust, but if a little bit of it's over, no big deal. So, and you can make the top edge even if you want, you could um, run a knife over it or something. I don't do that. I kind of like it all over the place. Okay. Here we go. And then we're just going to put it in the freezer. I put it in the freezer while I'm making the filling. Let it get nice and hard so that when you pour the filling in, it doesn't disrupt the crust at all. And that's the crust. Oh my gosh, do I love baking. Do you love baking too? Do you like hanging out in the kitchen with me? It really helps me a lot if you guys rate, review, and subscribe. Then I know what you're doing, what you like. Send me pictures of your bakes. That's always really cool. And you can find more of me on Instagram and TikTok and all those other crazy places. I've got a website. You can find all kinds of recipes there. So thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on the podcast and on the channel. Um, I'm super grateful and I hope that you are entertained or learning something you didn't know before and have the courage to try to bake gluten-free. So thanks again. Here's the filling. We're, we're having uh, two pounds of cream cheese. Holy smokes. That's a lot of cheese. <laughs> okay, here is probably the most important step of this part of the recipe. This cream cheese, it needs to be room temperature. And by room temperature, I mean it needs to be softened. So if it's freezing in your room, make sure this is not hard. If your cream cheese is too hard, you're going to have lumps. Nobody wants lumps in their cheesecake. I don't want lumps. And it's really hard once you start mixing to get those lumps out. So if it's too hard and you start mixing, just stop mixing. Let it get warmer and soften up until you can get it smooth. So we're gonna start beating this with a hand mixer. Okay, in spite of the fact that I had this out for a long time to heat up, it's still pretty cool. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna work at this a minute. Okay, uh, that initial mix was a bit rough. It was actually pretty soft, but it just got stuck in the beaters, which it might do. So you just want to beat it until it starts to get nice and smooth. See how it's almost like a thick frosting? And just make sure there's no lumps before we add the sugar. We're just going to beat it a little bit more. All right, I'm satisfied that that's smooth enough. Let's add some granulated sugar. And we're going to beat that in well. You're going to want to use a rubber spatula a lot because it's so thick that it likes to stick to the sides. So we'll just scrape it frequently and keep mixing. So it's really got a nice smooth texture right now. Look at that. Nice smooth creamy texture. And then we're going to start beating in the eggs. That was a cup of sugar. I think I forgot to tell you. It's a cup of granulated sugar and we're adding four eggs and one egg yolk. And we're just going to beat well. Make sure you scrape your bowl and the bottom to make sure there's no thickened cream cheese at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. So I'm adding um, about a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to add a little um, a tablespoon of lemon juice. And the reason I'm adding a tablespoon of lemon juice is I want this to be tart sweet because we're going to put toffee on it. And if it's just sweet, 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 I feel like it's not going to be as good together. We need a little more tartness. 
So that's why the sugar is only a cup instead of more. And we're adding a little bit of lemon. I didn't add lemon zest because I don't want the pieces in there. I just want a little tartness added. And then vanilla is just an amazing flavor with the toffee. All right, we're all done with the filling. All right, now we're gonna pour this into our chilled crust. The uh, cookie crumbs, the graham cracker cookie crumbs and the butter are actually pretty hard, which is great. And then we're just gonna pour our filling right in here. All right, we're gonna bake it. Uh, we're shooting for about an hour, an hour and 15. You never know with anyone's oven. So we're gonna test it periodically. And it goes. All right, let me just show you, it's done. See how it's a little bit, it's, it's actually came out a few minutes ago, but it's got a little jiggle. That's what you want. We're gonna let this cool, uh, cool at room temperature, and then we're gonna chill it for about four to six hours or so. Overnight's great. Here's how to make the toffee. We're gonna take a, a saucepan, this is a medium saucepan, and add a cup of butter, regular butter, and a cup of granulated sugar, and a quarter cup of water. And we're gonna boil it till hard crack stage, which is 305 degrees. Here's what the toffee looks like after just a couple minutes. It's just very liquidy, and the butter has um, just melted. So I'm gonna show you periodically because this takes a while. So this is about five minutes of, of heating. It looks like this. And then I'll just keep showing you at intervals what it looks like. So hopefully you can get a better idea of what to expect. Because I think sometimes that's what throws people who haven't made candy before. They're thinking, oh my gosh, is this right? Is this okay? And I'm going to help you out with that. So another five minutes has um, gone by. And you can see it's thicker. It's much, it's almost fluffy looking. It kind of starts to look like lava. And it's starting to brown a little bit. You might see little puffs of smoke. And you want to stir it with a wooden spoon. And make sure you stir all the bottom because you don't want butter to stick and burn on the bottom. And you're just going to keep doing this. It should be medium to medium, maybe slightly high, but make sure you watch it. If you have to go do anything, like answer the door, or go to the bathroom, do not leave this on the stove. You want to take it off the stove. You can always heat it up, but if you let it boil, it's going to burn on the bottom with unattended. Don't let it boil unattended. All right, about six minutes has gone by. If you can see, um, the toffee is turning toffee colored. Um, and it's kind of, it gets brown on the bottom, so you really have to be uh, stirring every corner of the pot. And um, it's really thick. It's got a really cool consistency, and it is really hot, so be careful with this. Um, I'm realizing I'm not wearing shoes in the kitchen, which is not a good idea, especially when working with something that's super hot. So I'm going to start testing this to see if it's done. Um, a thermometer, a candy thermometer, is what you put in it normally, but I use the cold water method, which is... I don't know, kind of old, but I'm going to test to see if it's a hard crack stage, which is 305. Um, see how it's got puffs of smoke coming out? Toffee is that burned butter and sugar. It's just burned enough that it's delicious, but not too burned. So when I'm going to test it, I'm going to take it off the fire here. All right, here. So I'm just going to take a little bit on my spoon like this and drizzle it in cold water. And I'm going to see what that hardens up like. Give it a minute because this stuff is hot. Just keep it off the fire for a second. It's fine. It's in ice water here. What I want is a, a sharp crack. Mm. It's getting there, almost there. It's cracking a little bit, but not quite enough here. So I'm going to cook it a couple minutes longer, and it'll be ready. It is cracking. I don't know if you can see that, but it could cook a little longer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm pouring it right out onto one of these... Um, Nonstick mats, these silicone mats. I'm just going to kind of spread it out. This uh, tray is going to get super hot, so be careful what you put it on. Here's the toffee cooled. It cracks pretty easily, uh, but it comes off the mat nicely. And then I'm going to break it. I want about six chunks to put in the cheesecake. And I'm not sure what size, but I'm going to take six chunks here because I'm going to decorate the cheesecake with it. Uh, that's four. I actually wanted to make this thinner. Thinner would have been a little better, but it's cold in my house and that means it's harder to spread the toffee. So it's a little thicker than I want, but that's okay. It's still delicious. I might have had some just a little bit over there. Yeah. Maybe I've lost my mind. But I'm gonna take, I didn't wash my pan because look at all that toffee that's in there. 
the recipe that I'm um, modifying just a little bit, they call for caramel sauce, which you can totally use. But I'm like, it's a toffee cheesecake. I don't just want pieces of toffee. I want toffee sauce. So what I'm going to do is use this dirty pan. It's, I just used it. Put the toffee back in here. I know this looks insane. But if you didn't know it, I'm going to melt this because it will melt. Took out about two, four, six, eight, ten, ten pieces. This size. Oops. This size. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of milk. I'm going to make toffee sauce. What the heck? Why would I want caramel? Which will be delicious as well. But I'm going to heat this up on a low heat and make sauce out of it. I think maybe I've plumb lost my mind, but oh my gosh, it's going to be good. This is on medium, medium low heat, and I kind of crushed them up a little bit because the smaller pieces will dissolve a little faster. I'm trying a quarter cup of milk. I honestly haven't made this and measured it before I've made it, and it was so good I was afraid to make it again. Honestly, I just wanted to eat that constantly. So this toffee sauce is going to be crazy good, um, it, but it might take a little more than a quarter cup of milk. All right, five minutes in, it really looks like a hot mess. It looks like this will never be anything edible, but I swear it's melting. You can see it's the milk is now caramel colored. It's getting liquid on the bottom and things are sticking. Actually, they're starting to not stick, I guess, and they're softening up exactly what we want. So don't despair, <laughs> it's coming. You just wanna make sure it doesn't burn. So just watch it, turn down the heat if you need to. We're getting closer. We have kind of, whoa, whoops, ouch, gonna burn that. Uh, we have kind of a thin syrup. It smells, oh my gosh, it smells divine. And there's still some chunks of toffee. We're gonna stir it to make sure it doesn't burn anywhere while all that stuff dissolves. And then I'm gonna see how thick it is and if I want it thinner, I can add a little more milk and boil it down a little bit. So you can always make it thinner or thicker. If you want it thinner, add a little more milk or water. If you want it thicker, you can cook it a little longer. Just watch for burning on the bottom. All right, look at that. Um, there's still some chunks that aren't quite dissolved. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of milk and cook it down a little bit because I want it to be smooth. And just watch for burning. So now it's way too thin, but I'm gonna cook it down a little bit and make sure all of those pieces are dissolved because I don't want any hard pieces in there. But look at that beautiful syrup, holy smokes. Oh my gosh, this is literally a liquid toffee bar. Oh. Okay, I'm a little excited about it. All right. This looks great to me. It's, it looks, I think it's smooth, as I say that and something goes by. Um, but if you wanna see what the texture's gonna be like when it cools, I don't want it super chewy because it's gonna be on a cheesecake. So if you put it on a cold plate, I'm gonna take this off the fire. Oh, hopefully I don't overheat my phone. Um, see how thick that is, but it's still, whoops, there's no focus, sorry about that. It's thick, but mm, not too thick. So I'm gonna take it off the fire now and let it cool for about 10 minutes. All right, let's talk about this hot mess here. Oh my gosh, look what happened. So yeah, even though it jiggled a little, it still cracked. I guess it happens to the, I was gonna say the best of us. I don't know if the, I'm the best cheesecake maker. It's still creamy and not, um, it'll be delicious. We're gonna cover it up with all this caramel or this toffee. So no worries. Uh, there are ways to smooth it over, but I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. This is just what it looks like. It's kind of a hot mess. Let's hope it's not a chasm that, uh, I don't know, get caramel in it or toffee, so that's not terrible. So we're just gonna pour the sauce that we cooled slightly over it. Oh my gosh. And just kind of make sure it spreads out a little bit. But there we go. Oh my gosh, so good. I'm gonna save a little bit um, to dress the pieces, you know, uh, but you don't have to. Obviously, if I was just serving it to family, I would um, just put it all on the top. But there you go, I'm gonna let that set up a little bit and then I'm gonna garnish it with the toffee and everything, so. Oh my gosh, oh, yum. And who, who noticed the crack now, right? Can't even tell, yay. All right, let's get to dressing this up. So I love the toffee on there. You could do piping of whipped cream around in little buttons. Of course, I hate piping. I don't even know where my piping stuff is. And if you're gonna serve it right away, put whipped cream on it by all means. But if you're gonna let it sit in the fridge, sometimes I like to put the whipped cream on at the last minute, like as I serve the slices. Um, yeah. So I have a bunch of shards of toffee. I have some plain ones and ones I put chocolate in. 
but it's going to look pretty plain if I just stick them in here on the toffee. So I think what I'm going to do here is put like a little bit of whipped cream like as in the center here. And it would have been better piped. I, I realize that. <laughs> and then I'm just going to stick some toffee uh, toffee bits and some chocolate toffee bits in here. All right, I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to put a little bit of extra chocolate because I feel like it just kind of looks plain. You know, if I wanted to pipe whipped cream, it would look a lot better, but that's all I'm going to do. I think it looks pretty good and it's going to taste phenomenal, which is what we're going to get to next. Oh my gosh. Look at that, people. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Check out this beautiful bake. There is just tons of creamy cheesecake here. Liquid toffee. It's actually li li liquid toffee. I'm all excited. I can't talk about it. There's a big chunk of toffee candy here that keeps falling over. Uh, you can't really see the evidence of my giant crack in the cheesecake. And it is still extremely moist and creamy. Uh, there's a beautiful graham cracker crust on there. And... Let's have some of this. Oh. Mm. Oh my gosh. It is so rich. Woo! But it is delicious. The toffee is a little is super buttery and soft. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. This is dangerously good. Like this is way. I have to give this away, or I don't know what's gonna happen. But this is delicious. The toffee with the slightly tart cheesecake. I did reduce some of the sugar, so it's a little tart, but it's still very sweet. And then I, the little bits of chocolate uh, on top of the toffee sauce and the graham cracker crust is just a delicious combination. Mm. And it's gluten-free, people. You can make it. It's gluten-free and it's delicious. Where are you going to get a cheesecake with actual toffee icing, toffee sauce, whatever? Mm. This is a delicious bake, and I really hope you try it. It's so so good. It's so good. Oh, oh my gosh. It's going to be hard for me to put this down and talk to you because <laughs> I don't want to keep eating and I can't eat and talk very well. So the next bake, I hope you decide to come join me for that one, is November 15th. We're making my favorite pumpkin pie. It's a spicy pumpkin pie. Not spicy as in cayenne pepper, but like good spices. So it has just a lot of flavor. And I think it has just more well, well rounded flavor, and we're using my, I was gonna say famous, it's only famous in my family, my pie crust, which is delicious and gluten free, and you can make it, it's super easy to make, and it's right before Thanksgiving, so I think you're gonna really wanna tune in for that one because it's gonna be amazing. In the meantime, you can find me on all the usual haunts TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know, Anchor. I'm all those lovely places, and uh, you guys enjoy your week. I hope you had a good time baking with me. I hope you're excited to um, make this toffee cheesecake, which is phenomenal. Until then, have fun in the kitchen. Eat something gluten-free. Mm. Bake something gluten-free. Eat it too. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to hide this for myself. I don't know how that would work, but... Mm. Oh my gosh, it's good. Oh. Mm. Woo. This is good.